If you're thinking about where to start out on your sustainable journey, I get it. I've been there and it takes a long time to have a lifestyle that is reflective of the knowledge and information that you've spent a long time gathering to make this decision. I congratulate you for that. So here is one, one thing that I know you can master today to help make your life more sustainable. You know, I'm kind of shocked that K-Cups are even still a thing. I thought we shamed everybody out of the K-Cup. But if you are using a K-Cup, get the reusable mesh one. Nobody wants to deal with your 365 plus plastic cups a year in the landfill. For the rest of us, sane enough not to use tiny plastic cups every single time we have a cup of coffee, which for some of us who are momming is four to five cups a day to retain sanity. So for those of us consuming coffee, in a coffee pot or a French press or a pour over. Whatever other form of coffee maker humbles and brings peace to your hipster heart is the one we're talking about today. I didn't ask for this plastic cup. They gave it to me for free. So now I have to use it because I want BPA in my system. My challenge for you today for you, and you, and you, and you. Stop throwing your coffee grounds in the trash. Stop. You know why? Because it's ridiculous. Putting your coffee grounds out into the world is okay. You have my permission. If you're not putting your coffee grounds onto the planet Earth every single day, or collecting them in a small cup or bowl on your countertop, and then taking them out at your convenience, later on to fertilize and nourish the planet, I'm challenging you. You have permission to stop throwing away your coffee grounds. Step one, into the new nature-y side of myself. If you needed permission, you have it, go ahead. Yes, it's fine. It looks like nobody's gonna know what the hell's going on. And then after you're done putting coffee grounds on the earth, I suggest you sit in silence in your house for at least 15 minutes. Think about how much shame you have around giving coffee beans the earth grew back to itself. Why are we ashamed of this? We must break the paradigm! I hope you will join me on the dark side of putting my coffee beans back on the earth. Two bonus tips. Sorry. Step one, dig a giant hole in your yard. Step two, cut the bottom of a Home Depot bucket out. Step three, put that bucket in that hole you dug in your yard. Step four, get a lid for that bucket. There's five gallon bucket lids at Home Depot, I promise. Step five, put animal waste inside bucket hole. Step six, because I'm holding the phone, cover bucket with lid. This is an incredibly good place for you to put your coffee grounds. Because coffee grounds smell great. And while the feces actually won't smell because nature will take over, and this is a great experiment for you to just be at home and be like, oh my gosh, wow, the earth is alive. Because like, we're kind of self-absorbed and we forgot about the earth. Then you can start to see how quickly this kind of thing can break down because it's organic material. It's very exciting and very disgusting all at the same time. That's why I'm so excited. But you should try this because it's way better for you to put your coffee grounds and your animal leaves in a hole in the ground with a lid. Oh, think about it. Be smart. Come on. You know your property better than I do. Don't start getting mad at me. I don't know what's going on with you. You figure out the best spot for you. But connect. Get back into nature. Put your waste in a hole in the ground at your house instead of in a hole in the ground millions of miles away that's lined by plastic and creating leachate and off-gassing methane and it's so, so bad and expensive for us to deal with this stuff and by the time the hole fills all the way up, guess what? They're gonna dig a landfill in your backyard anyway so it's better for you to put the organic matter that you have consumed into a hole into your own yard and create more soil, which is a carbon sequestering element that is actually pulling CO2 out of the atmosphere and sequestering it back into the soil where it is safe and can be used in better ways than heating the planet. So, tip number two is if you don't already comp compost your food scraps that you generate in your own kitchen at home, then you can get a large bowl to keep on your countertop. And that is where you put all of the organic waste as you're preparing food. And you can do this for the whole day. And then you have a nice bowl of organic matter that you can reflect on and see how much of the waste you can you produce in one day is organic material. So there's an educational opportunity for you. But then 
if you haven't already started a compost pile, then here's a great opportunity for you to just go dump that on the ground, mix it up with some leaves and some dirt that you have in your yard and get going. Trying to grow this channel to make people more comfortable with using their waste streams in us. We have a lot more power to reduce our footprint right in the square footage of our home space than we think that we do and we feel like we can't do anything sometimes, but these are real life tangible tips and solutions for you to stop sending so much of your rubbish off to the landfill. So thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, like, and share. This is Bree here now, and I will see you next.